Almeida, and I'm based in Brazil, and uh, I'm a kernel engineer at Colabra, an open source consultancy. So today I want to share some tips and tricks from my kernel development workflow that I have in Arch Linux. Arch Linux. And this is an overview of the things I'm going to show here, it's kind of a tutorial. Um, and first of all, I use Arch Linux for both professional and personal use. For professional use, I found very handy to have a lot of very up-to-date packages. And as part of Arch philosophy, they are very close to mainline, so maintainers rarely apply patches to reach. And uh, for instance, if I want to boot a custom kernel, I don't need to change anything in the user space, everything will be ready to run my custom kernel from mainline. And also, um, in this tutorial, I'll be, I'll be showing how to use a virtual machine because booting your own custom kernel requires some time and it's very painful to reboot your machine just to check if your print is working. And so, also, I found very useful to have a different root FS so um, I can do some experimental changes on all the stack and I won't, I do not risk uh, breaking my system. But if you want to use the same rootfs of your installation on your uh, testing, I recommend you checking the tool called Virtme, that is a wrapper around Kimo. And one more thing that I I found very useful for Arch Linux is the keep it simple philosophy. And on my workflow, I try to apply this principle as well. So I, for my workflow, I just need two additional tools. That is the Arch, Arch install scripts that will provide the same scripts that you use on a installation disk to install a new Arch Linux. And Kimo that will provide the the virtualization. And first of all, we need somewhere to store our rootfs. And for this, I create a file of 5 gigas. Uh, I use StoneCrate because in that way I can have a spare file that will grow as need. It won't be using 5 gigas from storage. After that, I format this file to have the x 4 file system. And then I just mount this uh, file in a directory. After that, we can use the backstrap, that is the same software, the same script that you use in an Arch Linux installation, to create the all directories and install some basic software there. Uh, if your system is up to date, you can use the flag dash C. So instead of downloading the package all game, you just use the cache from the whole system. And after that, your rootfs is complete in less than two minutes. Also, this is uh, useful, uh, it may be useful as well to install an editor like Vim or and the DACP client as well. And using Packstrap and the, and the cache flag, you won't need to download anything from the internet. So it's a very easy and fast setup. And since the rootfs is mounted, we can easily copy our SSH key there. And also we can use chroot to change the root password. And if you are always going to log in as root, you can use a system, you can change the system D configuration. So you can always auto log in in the root user. Those steps will help us in the future to make the use of the virtual machine easier. And now for using Kimo, these are the flags that I use. Uh, the first flag is HDA, that is to sign uh, to tell Kimo where is my disk. And then I use the kernel flag to specify the path of my compiled kernel. In this talk, I am not, I'm not covering how to compile your, your own custom kernel. But um, if you want, you can also use this flag with your current installed kernel of your system that is probably located 
on somewhere in boot, the boot directory. And also you, I use the append flag uh, to use some uh, kernel parameters. For instance, the root parameter tells us tells the kernel where it can find the root in which disk is the rootfs. So here is the first disk, the SDA. We use uh, we send the, also the parameter read write because we want to change the rootfs. And with console tti.so, you can tell to the kernel on where it should display the output and the shell when it boots. Some useful flags as well is the flag M, so you can specify how much memory do you want to give to your guest. Um, enable KVM will make a huge difference on your performance. And remember to enable virtualization on your BIOS menu, on your motherboard. And uh, also, uh, I like to use with a flag no graph, so Kimo will just run as a console application like Vim. And also use the SMP, you can specify how much, how many cores do you want to give to your guest. If you want to use networking inside your machine, if, for instance, if you want to use Git clone or use Pacman to get a new software, you can easily enable it uh, by just starting your the DHCP client that you installed here. Here, I'm using the ACP CD for that. So, um, copying and pasting files isn't a very efficient way to share some files with the, the guest. So what I do is uh, I create a shared folder. Um, in order to do that, you need to be sure that your kernel has some modules enabled like uh, mainly models that are related to the 9MP sharing protocol. And after that, uh, in the Kimo flags, I will add two devices, a file system device and then a virtuio 9P device. So um, you use this flag to choose which director you want to share. In this example, I am sharing a director name files inside my home directory of the user and uh, the name of the virtual device will be shared folder and then inside the guest uh, fstab file you just need to add uh, this line for the shared folder device and specifying where do you want to be where do you want uh, the multi point to be inside your guest during your testing, you may be required, required to use some graph complications. And I know two ways of doing that. My favorite one is the first I'm going to show, that is the SSH forge. But you can also use the key display. So in order to use the SSH forge, uh, first you need to install the open SD, SSD server on your guest and initiate the dynamo. You can find it on the open SSH package. And then you change some configuration on the SSH configuration file. Uh, namely, you permit the root login and also you say yes for X11 forwarding. Uh, for the Kimo flags, you need a basic, uh, to create a basic network card. And here we forward the port, you need to forward some ports. Uh, so you don't mess with the host ports. Here I am forwarding the port 1337 to the port 22. So uh, basically is that this, this is the setup. And then if you run ssh-x root at localhost, and then you specify your port. And just by doing that on your gas machine, you will be able to run graphical applications. Here's an example. Um, on the left side, I have my host, my, my the Quest machine, and then on the right side, I will use SSH, and then after doing that, I can open the XLock graphical application. And now, if you want a more complete graphical solution, you can run a whole compositor inside your virtual machine. Um, for that, 
the first thing you do is to remove the no graph upbeat option on chemo flags and then after that you need to install some kind of compositor here i'm using weston because it's very lightweight so i install uh, x the package of x whalen and weston uh, and then after that you need to config configure your weston to run on x whalen and so you need to create this file on your home folder and say xlab x whalen equals true then you just run weston on the command line and the weston environment will appear you can use your mouse to open the terminal and inside there you can call the graph application that you want when you are done you just type con you just hold control alt and backspace and weston will close and this is uh, a very basic setup using Kimo Display. Here you won't have support for clipboard, for sharing the same clipboard, or multi-monitor support. If you want to do that, I recommend you to use the Virt Manager, that is a front-end for Kimo with LibVirch. And then you can have a, a very nice graphical experience. Okay, and that's it. This is how, uh, how I spawn new virtual machines if I need to do some testing and uh, also share, sharing files with my uh, virtual machine, uh, run graphical applications and as you can see it requires almost uh, no new program. Everything is uh, command line applications so it's very easy to create some bash scripts. Here is the link for uh, a git repository where I store my scripts and also here's a link of uh, our blog post at the Collabora web website uh, where you can find a more detailed explanation of my talk and thanks for watching and now I would like to hear if you also have some tips of kernel development workflow thank you